Hello, everybody. My name is Tom Karko, and I am a senior software engineer on Azure API management. And today I will talk about building a resilient API landscape with Azure API management. In this day and age, we see that the digital transformation is building on top of APIs, which means this is a super essential part in your platform because it can become a single point of failure. So we need to make sure that this does not become a problem for your business. In this talk, we will see how Azure API management uh, can help you build a resilient platform. But first, we need to have a look at Azure API management as such. It has three main components, which is the developer portal, management plane, and the gateway, which we also refer to as the data plane. The most crucial part of API management is your data plane. This is where your live traffic goes through. But of course, you also need to make sure that customers can still explore your APIs and that the platform teams can still maintain and configure the APIs that they expose. So there's a lot of uh, burden on us to make sure that we do not have any problems. So I will show you some of the aspects that can help and first of all, we need to design for failure on the infrastructure level. With that, I mean, we need to make sure that all these uh, units and these machines that are running under the hood are running highly available. And that can be easily done by using availability zones, which make sure that all your units are spread across the region and avoid uh, having failure uh, when a single data center goes down. This highly increases your SLA as well and is available in premium tier and all AZ enabled Azure regions. Secondly, as your business grows, your traffic will also grow and you need to make sure that you can keep up with the load. And this is where auto scaling the gateway and the platform itself is crucial. This is also available as a platform as a service through Azure uh, monitor auto scale, which is just a couple of clicks to set up, which helps you meet that demand, but also helps you be cost efficient to scale back in when the traffic is slowing down. And we live, live in a global world, which means there's multiple regions. We want to make sure that a regional outage does not impact the whole platform. We want to make sure that our gateways are running as close to your customers as possible. And this is where the secondary regions come in. You can use one Azure API management instance and deploy them to multiple locations to meet the needs of your platform and to reduce the risk when a data center goes down. Even bringing a gateway closer to your customer can also increase the speed because you get faster into the Azure backbone uh, instead of going over the public internet. And of course, uh, when you design for failure, you also want to test for failure. So you can do chaos testing by disabling gateways in various regions and see how your traffic pattern reacts to it. This helps you simulate Azure outages in certain regions and test how it reacts. And in this case here, uh, you can see what it looks like to have an API management instance with two regions, where when, you, when, of, when one of your customers send a request to, in this case, contoso.azureapi.net, it is using Azure, Load, uh, Azure Traffic Manager actually under the hood to route traffic to the nearest region and the nearest gateway to uh, send the request. If one of those regions would go down, the traffic would automatically uh, fill over to any of the other available regions. And this is how you can easily use these secondary regions, for example, to uh, mitigate these issues. So uh, let's do a quick demo and see how easily you can set those things up to make sure that your infrastructure is ready uh, to, to mitigate these problems in the future. I have here an Azure API management instance, uh, which has the premium tier. And uh, let's start by adding 
or seeing how you can add multiple secondary locations of the gateway. So on the left, you can see there is a locations section where you can add multiple units. In this case, I already added three uh, secondary regions where you can add multiple units. And in this case, you can see that Southeast Asia is actually using three availability zones. If you want to add more, it is just as simple as selecting the, lo the location. For example, let's go to Australia and you can add availability zones. Do note that if you want to add availability zones, you need to make sure that this meets the amount of units that you have. So in this case, we want to have three availability zones. We want to add the unit and then click OK. Once you did that, we are already present in multiple uh, Azure regions. However, there is a caveat that when you go to secondary uh, regions, you will only provision the gateway and not the control plane and the developer portal. So that is important to keep in mind, which is why it's called a secondary location and not the primary. Second is um, the instance has provides metrics on how is your gateway doing. This is the capacity metric, which is sort of the most important one to see how much capacity you still have. In this case, you see I had a peak here of 45%, uh, but on average, it's uh, very quiet. However, when you're doing multi-region scenarios, you can also see the usage by region here in this list, which is important for your monitoring purposes, alerting purposes, etc. Now, in order to make sure you have enough capacity, you can use the Azure Monitor Autoscale integration and either use the manual scale or use the autoscaling option. In this case, I have configured two rules to scale out when the capacity is above 70% and then add one instance. If it has been less than 40% for 10 minutes, then decrease the unit by one. And this allows you to react to how uh, your traffic pattern is doing. If you're using application insights to monitor your APIs, which you can simply add here, you can basically see the traffic flowing across your regions as well. So if, we, if I go to this instance and select the application map, you get this nice visual where you can see uh, my one single instance and the, and the secondary locations. You can see the average response time, how many calls it received, and where the traffic is flowing. So if I would have different backends by region, this would also be reflected here. And lastly, every API management instance has a domain name. So what we can do is, of course, we can send health probes to this instance. For example, when I do a curl, there is a, a default endpoint that sends me if the service is still healthy. But when you're using multiple regions, it is always nice to be able to see uh, how it reacts in that same uh, region. So uh, in this case, um, let's talk to South East Asia. And let me first verify that I have the region correct. Southeast Asia. And when I sent the same request, you can see that I get a 200 OK back as well. So this not only allows you to send health probes, you can also, uh, for some reason, send direct requests to these specific endpoints if you have the need. Let's go back to the slides. So we've seen how we can use multiple regions, how we can auto scale to, meet you, to make sure you have the capacity, how we can use availability zones to make sure that the compute is spread across the data centers and the availability zones in the region, and how you can use uh, application insights to also monitor your traffic pattern. 
So let's look at the application side of things uh, and how to protect your backends as well to make sure you are not overwhelming them. So uh, you can prevent abuse by using policies such as rate limit, quota, uh, and limit concurrency. You can use circuit breaking to make sure that once your backend is having problems, uh, that you stop sending requests so that it is able to recover. You can also use load balancing to make sure that you distribute requests across multiple backends. And you can use retries to uh, make sure that if there's a transient failure, you can just retry that failure. So load balancer is available in public preview. It is a new type of backend that basically allows you to point to multiple other backend services. Uh, it is a very easy way, uh, and you no longer need to write your own exotic policies to achieve this, which uh, I will show in the demo. Secondly, Circuit Breaker is also a new feature in Public Preview uh, that allows you to define that criteria that I mentioned. And when that criteria is met, the circuit will be open and we will stop sending requests uh, to your backends as well. So uh, I always say talk is cheap. So let's quickly see how this works in action. So I have here a uh, ARM template, which we saw in the slides. And uh, basically, we just give it a name, which is called Products Load Balancer. And I basically point it to two separate backends. Once you have this backend created, you can use a policy to just change the backend and send all the requests to this load balancer. So I already created these backends, which you can see uh, here. So I, I have this uh, monolith, products API, and the load balancer. So now if I go to my APIs, and basically go to the products API and then add edit the policy, paste this in and click save. I can now start calling this backend on this URL and I get a response. I also have a, a policy on the all APIs level, which is giving some information. For example, this request was sent uh, to this backend URL. In this case, the monolith. If I do this call a couple of times, we will see now it's going to another backend. If I do the call again, it's going to the monolith, etc. So just by creating a backend and having these two uh, backends defined to which it should send the requests. It's doing it out of the box with just uh, changing the uh, policy point to the new load balancer backend and send the requests. Everything happens for you. If you use the uh, debug, uh, the trace API capability that you have, you can also see this uh, in detail. If you want to do load balancing based on the region that is being called because sometimes you want to send it to a regional backend. You can also use context properties such as this scenario to change the backend service. Circuit Breaker uh, works very similar. So you give it a backend URL. In this case, we define that if there are four, five failures which are defined by uh, status code 500 or more, uh, this is considered to be failure criteria, and it will stop forwarding the requests. After the period of time, uh, which is in this case one minute, it will then uh, slowly send requests through. And if it's fixed, it will happily send the requests through forever. In this case, I have the same policy to change the backend to my new uh, circuit breaker backend. And I added some additional headers to show that if there is a failure, you get more information. So I'm going back to my APIs again. And I have this bacon API, oops, where I will apply this. And in this bacon API, 
I have a uh, small header that I can add, which basically says add chaos to always fail the request. So because I'm now using the circuit breaker backend, I will get uh, five failures, three, four, five. And now you see that the circuit is broken. It is giving me temporary unavailable with the name of my backend. And because I added these additional uh, custom headers in the response, I can see where it failed, why it failed, what the message is, etc. So both of these features are available in public preview. Uh, give them a try and let us know what you think. So let's go back to the slides and uh, wrap up. Thank you very much for joining. So hopefully you've learned how to protect your infrastructure and also help you on the application side to prevent uh, being impacted by any outages, hiccups, uh, and be able to recover faster to avoid having any business impact. Thank you for watching.